rip Back to our drug therapy Now I've just had my cup of tea It does analyze and evaluate Ethics and effectiveness And evidence of drug success Let us start I simply just can't wait Okay, so welcome back. So now we've got to do two things. So the, the key things in this um, this part of the talk, this is uh, drug therapy part two. The key things we need to do is that we need to be able to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, antidepressants and antipsychotics, how well they work. And the second thing we need to be able to do is to evaluate the ethical issues that are involved in giving drugs to um, people with these particular issues. Okay, so what you'll need to do in the exam is to be familiar with research and to be able to make critical points about that research, okay? So, for example, looking at uh, the effectiveness of uh, antidepressants is something that's uh, there's been a, a really long-standing debate about whether they work and whether they're actually better uh, than placebos, for example. But uh, before, but let's look at a couple of pieces of research, and this should be plenty if you uh, if you get enough detail down about these two. This should be plenty to be able to answer an evaluation question combined with the stuff we're going to be doing on the antipsychotics. Okay, so uh, first piece of research to look at is fairly recent. Was a, a review a, a review of seventeen drug trials. Uh, looking at the the effect over three months, so that's short term result of um, of SSRIs on OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, and uh, Sumeru et al. in two thousand eight found indeed that there was um, uh, an improvement in terms of the uh, behaviour of the people with OCD. So that's positive. Certainly, it seems it's suggesting that the the the, uh, the drug works now for one condition. You might want to say, "Well, hold on a second. Um, it's not it's not a depressive illness, so that's that's not particularly great evidence for the effectiveness of an antidepressant on depression." So, looking at looking at another one, which is um, which is more directly uh, involved, is uh, a study done in twenty eighteen by Cipriani et al. And again, it's another literature review. So they looked at 522 trials um, uh, of that compared different uh, antidepressants to um, placebo. And in the 522 that they, uh, they reported on, they found that over the short term period, again, of three months, um, what they what they found was that um, the the antidepressants were better performed better than the placebo, again, which is a, a positive thing. However, um, there are there are issues with this, and so, so only some of those uh, of the the drugs that they looked at were uh, SSRIs, but the SSRIs were obviously effective, right? However, they only looked at pretty much half of the trials that were done so of the of the period that they were looking at there were about a thousand trials done um, many of them done by drug companies right okay so so they they only looked at half of them which is a which is an interesting thing and many of the many of the trials done by drugs companies if they don't get if they don't uh, get results that uh, show that their particular drug is significantly better than a placebo then they don't publish it Okay, so it's very possible that uh, Cipriani's uh, research um, isn't as accurate as it could be, and it may be the case that maybe um, SS uh, antidepressants aren't as uh, effective as the, his, the data would suggest. Okay, so, um, so that's two. There's two pieces of research looking at SSRIs. SSRIs have got um, a list of um, 
a list of side effects. Um, and oh, and although they might, might don't necessarily, when you look at them at, at first glance, uh, suggest you know major issues, um, they can these side effects can be strong enough to, to ink. And the, the point about them is that they can be strong enough to uh, stop people taking the antidepressants. Um, so if they are so if they are effective, their effectiveness is going to be reduced because people are taking them to avoid uh, not taking them to avoid the side effects. Got a list of the side effects here. Ranging from headaches and nausea. Interesting that there's quite a lot of stomach uh, and digestive issues. Uh, serotonin is very. There's is actually um, a lot of serotonin present in the present in the gut, for example. So that's a that's an interesting thing to notice there. Anxiety, sexual problems are also issues. So um, you need to you need to be aware of those and to be able to um, describe them because that's going to be these side effects are going to affect the effectiveness. If people stop taking the drugs because of these side effects, then that's going to make the drugs less effective. Looking at uh, antipsychotics now, um, if we look first of all at the, uh, the, old, the uh, typical or conventional antipsychotics, for example, chlorpromazine, um, David et al. found that um, in the short term, Again, it was uh, uh, effective in 75% of patients, which which sounds like a good thing. And but and also in a later piece of research, David Sattel found that um, 55 to 60% of people taking chlorpromazine experience long-term beneficial effects in terms of re terms of reduced symptoms. Okay, um, they do seem to be uh, effective against positive symptoms. So the, the negative symptoms aren't really dealt with, and that's a problem for conventional antipsychotics. And there's a high risk of side effects, and the side effects uh, can be quite serious. Um, also, another evaluation point you might, might want to mention is that um, uh, Davis's research was probably conducted on people in hospital, in, uh, in institutions, and people who are not in hospital tend to be less uh, diligent or less careful about taking the drugs. Okay, so that they may not take them so often, so they might not work so well. Again, so looking at side effects from, um, from conventional antipsychotics, um, people can develop uh, what we call extra pyramidal side effects. That's, a, that's uh, side effects affecting a particular area of the brain, and you can end up with motion type problems such as um, Parkinson's type symptoms. So that's a sort of shaking, shakiness and so on. Tardive of dyskinesia, which is like an uncontrollable, um, sort of losing control of the muscles in your uh, face and your tongue. Uh, postural and motor abnormality. So again, it, so it's affecting movement and the way we sit, okay. There are also other side effects in terms of sedation. So people might not be quite so alert. Weight gain is an issue. Uh, and seizures are also an issue. So again, this is important to mention when you're talking about the effectiveness of a drug, you want to be saying that, that they do work. It's certainly been shown from the Davis et al. study that they do work. But on the other hand, you also want to show that these serious side effects could mean that people who would really benefit from the drugs don't take them and therefore don't uh, don't recover because um, because of the sort of nasty nature of the side effects. Looking at, at atypical um, drugs now, so if we think of um, clozapine, um, they're just as effective as typical drugs on positive symptoms, but they're also better for negative symptoms, and that was found by Bilder et al. in 2002. Um, atypical drugs, so there are, there are patients who take, who can be given lots of different types of treatment and, and they don't seem to work, so people who, who maybe can't, who take uh, can, something like chlorpromazine, a, a typical anti uh, antipsychotic, take that, but they're not they're not recovering from it. Um, they're more likely to benefit from uh, atypical drugs like clozapine. Okay. Um, another positive th uh, point about the atypical drugs is that there's less risk of uh, extra pyramidal side effects. So those the business like um, Tardif dyskinesia and all those things, Parkinson's. 
uh, but other side effects uh, may occur and there's a, there's a risk of a really serious blood disorder which if not monitored very carefully can be fatal so uh, it's not all uh, plain sailing with uh, atypical drugs okay a uh, couple more side effects for you oh no that's it okay so thinking about ethical issues now um, one question that we need to ask about is whether it is right to use placebos in these trials. So what we've got is two, if we're doing a, an independent measures, uh, randomized controlled drug trial, we've got two groups of patients all with schizophrenia. Now, is it right to be given, be giving one, one of those groups, um, a drug that we believe is going to help them. And then the other people were not giving them anything. So is that, a, is that a good way to treat, someone with us with a serious worrying illness that's a question we need to think about you're probably thinking aha but the argument in favor of these drug trials is that even though the people who are getting the placebos they may not be benefiting from the drug but in the long term right if we discover that these drugs are effective then we know that they'll be effective for lots of people and then that that can be really helpful um, for a large group of people who might be suffering from schizophrenia so we're balancing in a way we're balancing the benefit that people are going to get in the future um, and saying well that's maybe and some people you might you'd have to agree with this but some people would say the fact that lots of people are going to benefit from these drugs in the future justifies a few people being given a placebo and not improving during a drug trial okay um, also some patients who, who, who may be suffering so much from um, schizophrenia, they might say, listen, I don't mind if you give me a placebo. I want to be part of the trial. Would that be acceptable? And would it be possible for someone with schizophrenia to be able to say that anyway? So we've got that's quite an important issue. OK, we've also got an issue about um, the information that the patient uh, is given. OK, so there's a couple of things there. Um, it may be impossible for the person with schizophrenia because remember schizophrenia is a psychotic illness the person has lost control lost contact with reality so if they're too ill to understand the uh, the side effects that they may be experience they're not going to be in a position to give valid consent to get to give the treatment um, maybe what do you think about what doctors should do? do these these drugs have got lots of side effects but if you've got someone who's seriously psychotic and is not uh, not in contact with the world at all do you do you really want to uh, spell out all the side effects and risk them not taking their drugs and therefore not getting better um, also could be drug could be drug companies could be doctors um, maybe exaggerating the benefits of the drugs just to get people to do them is that is that a right thing to do those are issues that we need to be thinking about okay well done so now what we need to do is when you go away and be th and be thinking about those two things try and try and get your thoughts in order so that you could you can answer a, a 10 mark question either on um, evaluate the effectiveness of um, drug therapy or evaluate the the ethical issues involved in drug therapy it would be worth getting some kind of summary summary down for both of those that would really help you for the exam in future okay so that was nice to see you and uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon bye